Now check this out, yeah? But everything went full circle for us in March. At the start of the month, Nico Jackson bangs in the header to score the opening goal in a 2-2 draw against Brentford. Then to wrap the month up, Burnley's Oche comes out from nowhere, makes it 2-2 for 10-man Burnley away from home. It feels like we've come full circle and it feels like we begin and end things the exact same way and maybe that sums up life at our football club right now. But today, my friends, I'm here to discuss all of March's highs, lows, and frustrations as well too, as I'm here to introduce a new series where I discuss what we learned for the month. In this video, I'll be discussing my player of the month, goals of the month, most improved player, players who are up, players who are down, and of course, we discuss what to expect in April too. So my friends, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I've been meaning to make something like this for a while, so if you guys wanna see more videos from this series like this, hit that like button right now. I wanna get over 1,500 likes. If I can get over 1,500 likes, I know you guys wanna see more of this. So you guys, hope you enjoy, sit back, relax, and I'm gonna break down what we learned in March. Now for March's player of the month. It can only go to one man and one man only, and that is Cole Palmer. That's three assists, four goals, and three Man of the Match awards in March. He now makes that 19 goals and 10 assists for the season. It really feels like he has become our new one matter. But if there was one thing, a one area in which Cole Palmer has developed and stepped up even more this month, he has shown that he is this football club's new talisman. He's the player that other players turn towards to figure the game out, to take responsibility away from them, to affect the game, to make things happen, to be that key defining player that can help us in any situation. And it does feel like in March, this has been a new responsibility that Cole Palmer has been absolutely relishing. And it always seems like he's been destined for this, hence why he decided to fast track his career, leave Man City, take the opportunity here, and he hasn't looked back since, because right now, this season, he's one of the best under 21 players in Europe. And I guess it's no surprise that we're getting reports now suggesting that we are ready now to pay this guy even more money, give him a bumper contract to make sure that we safeguard his long-term future at this football club. For all the responsibility, the goals, the skills, the moments, there is one area in which Cole Palmer has to still improve in, and that has been his drop-off in his work rate. Now, I don't want to try and dampen this guy's bubble, He's by far our most significant player, but I have noticed a drop off in his work rate when it comes to tracking back with Gusto, when it comes to pressuring off the board as well too, and when it comes to getting back into a structured position. And I say this because he came from Man City. If this was Pep Guardiola, this is the bare minimum that he expects from him. So for a player as good as Cole Palmer, I'm gonna keep this guy's standards all the way up here. You could argue that with more responsibilities to the team, maybe he just can't afford to work as much off the ball because he has to be alert, he has to be ready, and he has to be focused to be that talisman for his team. Palmer has announced himself as the number one in the team this season. I think this month reflects that even more. Everything goes through him and everyone plays towards him. So this is why Cole Palmer is the deserved player of the month in March. Let's now move on to most improved player this month. And there were two names I was considering. That was Nicholas Jackson and his improvement in leading the line. And that was Malo Gusto for his effectiveness throughout the team. But for the player that I'm gonna give this award to, I'm gonna give that to Mikhailo Mudrik. He's played two great games this month. He scored one phenomenal goal against Newcastle. He showed flashes of brilliance versus Leicester in the FA Cup. And most importantly, he stepped up for his country and helped them qualify for the Euros after scoring in Ukraine's 2-1 win over Iceland. He then comes back last week versus Burnley and puts in his most impressive dribbling performance of this whole season. I feel like this has been a month for Mudrik where he stepped up a lot more, not only for his nation, but for his club. And I think that next month, April, this will be the big test for him. But I feel like this month he set himself up in this position based on his hard work and his improvement in his confidence. So for myself, I feel like Mikhailo deserves this for what he's been through so far. And I'm hoping that this is the start of many exciting times to come right now. We move on to the best goal score this month. And we saw some very nice contenders. You're looking at Cole Palmer's Penenka penalty versus Burnley. 
You're looking at Lukumaka's finishing move with a 1-2 with Cole Palmer versus Leicester. You're looking at Madweke's fourth goal score versus Leicester as well too. And you're looking at Cole Palmer's goal scored outside the box against Newcastle. But if there was one defining goal scored in March, it could only be this goal and that was Mudrick's solo effort against Newcastle. We saw Mudrick at his most instinctive best. You see him take responsibility away from Conor Gallagher. Then it's a perfect touch that takes out two, three Newcastle players. Another touch into space to bait the keeper. He then rounds the keeper off and converts into an empty net. And I think since Mudrick scored this type of goal, he hasn't looked back. And the real question is right now, will we finally start to see the real Mikhailo Mudrick announce himself consistently? Now it's time to move on to players who are up and players who are down. Starting with players who are up, for me, these were the four best players in March. You're looking at Cole Palmer. You're looking at Malo Gusto. You're looking at Nico Jackson. And I'd say you're looking at Mikhailo Mudrik. Now for Cole Palmer, I think he speaks for himself. But for Malo Gusto, he was the second best player this month. He was our main attacking outlet down that right hand side. He picked up two assists during this month too. It could have easily been more if most of his teammates finishing boots was on point. But I think his best performance this month came away against Brentford where this was a game that Gusto basically looked like a right winger because Gusto is a winger that can also defend. It's a massive shame that he ends a month out injured. Let's hope it's not a serious hamstring injury and he's going to be ready in time for Man City in April. I think Nico Jackson is definitely up because you're seeing that Nicholas Jackson is learning. He is demonstrating what he's learning. We saw him score with a header. We've seen him lead the line. We've seen him set up his teammates as well too. And most importantly, he is involved in every key aspect that leads to goals for his team. I think Nicholas Jackson is someone that you continue to put your stocks in because you will eventually cash out on this guy because I really think based on how he wants to learn and improve and his humbleness, he has the potential to become a world-class striker. And I feel like Mudrick deserves to be acknowledged as well because you're seeing what he's doing with more confidence, not only for his club, but for his nation as well. Now for the players that are down. I'm sorry, the number one down player this month, sadly, is Raheem Sterling. It's not been a great month for him. We've seen some selfish actions. We've seen Sterling completely miss his finishing boots. We're seeing Sterling look in one dimension when it comes to taking on his opponents. The only small saving grace was that in the final game of the month against Burnley in his little sub cameo, he was looking better than he's looked during the entirety of this month. But for someone like Raheem Sterling, his experience, his stature, and what he's done in this league, he has to put that month behind him and he's got to get ready to come back big in April because we have never needed Raheem Sterling's experience even more than what we'll need him for in April. For the next player that's down, I'm going to have to put here to Sassy. Now, I'm not saying that he's an absolute flop and he was just like criminally disgracefully bad but I felt like he had some weaknesses this month. Yes, he scored versus Brentford but was he necessarily making the best decisions? When he has space open up in front of him, I'm not too sure and I think we saw that when he didn't block down Isak's shot outside the box when I think that was the best action in that moment. Outside of that, he's not looking as dominating when it comes to defending set pieces for us. He made his individual mistake against Leicester. It's not the first time he's made a mistake like this this season. And I would just say that he hasn't been at his most consistent best like what he was in February. So I feel like De Sassi has to step up now next month. And for the final players, I would say that's our goalkeepers in both Robert Sanchez and Jorge Petrovic. Now for Sanchez, he had an absolute nightmare versus Leicester. But you know what? I can even maybe afford to give this guy some grace because... It's quite obvious that he hasn't recovered from his injury. But for Jorge Petrovic, I feel like this was the month that he'll learn from. Yes, he made that bad individual error against Burnley. His first mistake so far, but I'm not going to stick it on him too much. He's only now just recently broken to the first team and he's clearly a player with talent potential that still has a lot of work to do. Petrovic's technique has been called into question at times with Petr Cech talking about his footwork when it comes to defending shots outside the books. And I think the weakest area in his game is distribution out from the back with too many passes going out of play and going over the touchline. So George A can definitely learn a lot from this month and I'm sure that he'll come back better and stronger in April. Two more segments left and we now discuss what went good and what went bad in March. For the good parts, we scored a ton of goals. 
11 goals in 4 games isn't too bad and it was nice to see a lot of our attacking players scoring these goals instead of defenders or fullbacks. I think that a lot of our attacking players have been in good individual form and we're going to need these guys in April. Outside of that, I guess on a very small, small minor positive, we have shown an ability to come back when we've conceded, I guess, is very, very small. But I guess to move on to Waltman Bads. <laughs> this list is going to be a lot longer, but I think our defending has come into question. We've conceded eight goals. In every game in March, we conceded two goals. It didn't matter if we had a man advantage. It didn't matter if we played against a team in the lower division. We still conceded two goals. And this is something that has to get fixed now. Because you're seeing a team that is lacking that defensive responsibility, that tactical now, to not only stay in their structure, stay in their positions, but also pressure off the ball, move aggressively off the ball, defensive willingness to want to win that ball back. Every single time we've scored a goal, the biggest crime has been that we mentally switch off and this is when the opposition takes us. It happened in every game last month, we've seen no improvement and it's a bit of a worrying sign that we ended the month just like we started it. Wingers aren't tracking back as aggressively as they should be. The field players aren't putting in the same work. More individual errors are creeping in. If there's one area that must improve dramatically for next month, it has to be how we defend and press off the ball. And for the final bad thing we learned, are our players becoming a bit too selfish? Yes, last month brought a lot of goals, a lot of shots on goals, but equally frustration when it comes to players picking the optimum solution in in-game scenarios. In the last game against Burnley, how many attacks went to waste because players took shots when they should have passed the ball and passed the ball instead of taking shots. We've seen players not square the ball. I'm looking at you Raheem Sterling in moments where you should have, but this individuality isn't just applying itself offensively, but you're seeing this even more defensively where if a player's lost his duel, He's not running back to get the ball back. He's passing responsibility onto his teammate. And this is what teams at the top just cannot do. So that's everything bad that I think we learned last month. But to move on now, what does the month of April have to offer us? Now, considering that we lost the Carabao Cup final near the end of February, I guess technically, March was the only month in which Pochettino was undefeated for the month. However... We haven't climbed the table at all. We dropped points at the start of the month and we dropped those same points near the end of the month and we still find ourselves in the bottom half of the league. To score goals, we had to concede goals. And when you see the fixture list for what we need to expect and get ready for in April, it feels like if there's one month this whole season that will define and help Pochettino save his job here, it's going to be based on what he does in April because we have some massive games coming up. Not only did we have our FA Cup semi-final against Man City on the 20th, we're playing against Man United. We have Arsenal and we have Aston Villa coming up. The FA Cup semi-final game will be the biggest game of the month because securing European football for next season can do untold wonders for this team. Beating Man City, securing an FA Cup final spot, puts us in the Europa League. And that could help us out not only financially but commercially as well too because we have a lot riding on what we can do if we secure European football. So there's going to be a ton of pressure on that team. We have drawn twice against Man City and it feels like for this final showdown it's set to be a symbolic showdown because third time now has to be a win. Now these players tend to raise their games in the bigger games but we haven't picked up a big body win but most times we raise our game up. We aren't securing the W's, we're not getting the wins. So in April, there's a lot to play for, there's a lot to get prepared for, and it doesn't help that we don't have Malo Gusto at the start, or even Reese James. Let's hope that players such as Levi Cole can come back. I think we've missed him out in the back. Let's hope that Carnes can get fully fit. We've seen glimpses of his talents this season. It feels like if he was here more consistently, we'd have better balance in the final thirds. And let's hope that Pochettino gets the game management right. Yes, a lot of players are tired. Yes, a lot of players might be feeling like they're getting overused. But April is a month that we can really decide and ascertain our future. And we can't let this opportunity go to waste. So my friends, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. That is everything that we learned in March. If you guys want to see more of this type of review breakdown for the month, let me know in the comment section. Share your thoughts and opinions. Who are your players of the month? What's your goal of the month? 
And let me know this. What is your moment of March? So my friends, I am Nini FC. This is Blue Lines TV. I'll see you guys later with some more videos. Cool.